The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Clearview Cyclones, clear the air and breathe easy. Well, I just got back from Woodworking in America 2013 in Covington, Kentucky. It was a great three days, lots of education, camaraderie, got to meet a lot of old friends and make some new ones. So I figured I'd show you a little bit of what I saw in terms of instructors and also the vendors because they love talking about their products. So you'll see some of the new tools and they're a little bit pricey, some of them. So uh, let's get into it. My weekend began with this. Roy Underhill hewing a massive log on a rickety stage. Working a log with an axe isn't exactly on my to-do list, but I just couldn't miss an opportunity to see a legend in action. I also attended classes from the likes of renowned marquetry expert Silas Kopf and the venerable Chuck Bender. Yeah, that's right, Chuck. I said venerable. While the classes were great, much of my time was spent on the vendor floor. This is where you'll see vendors of unique and, in many cases, very expensive tools. You might also see this guy. Let's listen in on what he has to say. My life has changed so much since working with Mark Spagnolo. Oh, you like him too? Chortle. But enough about him. Let's see what some of these folks have for sale. For a long time, uh, the biggest problem in sharpening has been getting a decent honing guide, something that'll actually hold a blade well. Uh, we've been working for a number of years on a solution. We decided to deal with that by making our own guide that clamps from the top you're referencing off the top edge of the blade. So any thickness blade is going to give you the same, diff same angle based on the projection off the front of the jig. So if you put this in, clamp it down, finger tight is all it takes with this guide. No one guide is going to do everything. And so what we've done with this is make the jaws that hold the blade removable. Pops off that easy. You've got a captured screw. You can't lose them. There's little index pins that, sh that locate off of these holes in the top of the jaw. We've got a skew blade or a skew jaw. Allows you to, if you put the pair on there, you can sharpen an 18 degree angle. We've got a tall jaw for doing mortise blades or very thick blades. Uh, we've got long jaws for doing short blades. There's a whole range of them. Uh, this jig as its base model with the, the standard jaw and a uh, tall mortise jaw is going to be about $100. This is what we call, what's called a plow plane. It's based off the uh, number 43 Miller's patent. Uh, it's a form that was used back in about 1850 and it's changed. The plow plane has the design, overall design and features of them have changed quite a bit. Uh, this is a very classic, elegant approach to the whole thing. So I like to come in underneath the bar here, put my palm up against there and my thumb right up on top of the tool. As I start on the short end, come in with a cut and work your way back. The little spill built in on the, on the blade cap kicks the shaving out to the bench side of the tool. Great for drawer bottoms, uh, all sorts of other applications for a groove. As soon as you get down to the depth stop, you stop cutting and you end up with a continuous, clean bottomed groove. And never a need to plug anything in. We're proud to announce the Shenandoah Mallet, which is a, a woodworker's uh, premium mallet. Uh, this one happens to be made of zebra wood. Um, this is an all-American product. We uh, designed the handle ourselves and we turn and uh, finish the handle in our uh, Shenandoah Valley workshop. Uh, this particular mallet is a one pound mallet and it uh, can be held in two positions. One position uh, for chopping and chiseling or you can choke up on it for light tapping and for carving. Um, we also offer a one and a half pound mallet, which is exceptionally good for mortising and heavy chopping. 
This is our six inch marking gauge. It features a fingernail grind on the blade, which keeps the, uh, which helps to keep the uh, fence and the line true. It won't track the grain. It, uh, it even works well, very well with the grain. The gauge rides in a sliding dovetail to keep it square. It has a very shallow fence that uh, allows you to do the work on the bench instead of having to always hang your wood, your work off the edge. We do sell them in the four and the six inch versions and it's more comfort of the hand than it is uh, for the distance that it will mark. The panel gauges, they, uh, I make them out of just about any kind of woods. They are uh, 28 inches long. They feature a special locking mechanism that positive locks the beam so it, there's no movement in any of the six directions. You can turn it around and uh, it's a pencil gauge for doing your rough work. Uh, the new traditional gauge uh, features the same clamping system that's in the panel gauge and uh, they're eight inches long, four inch wide beam or face and uh, they just allow a more traditional feel for the guys that think the, uh, my regular gauges are a little small. So people ask me, I have a $3,000 table saw, a Fest tool chop saw, why would I ever want to use a shooting board? So this little jig uh, demonstrates that. Um, I might want to get a certain fit between these two points. And uh, in my case, I will uh, stop the table saw after I get about this close to my knife line. And then I'm going to bring the workpiece over to the shooting board. And what we're going to do here is um, basically do go no go with this piece because what I'm trying to get here is this kind of fit. Uh, you'd call it an interference fit if you were a machinist. And so in joinery we have compression uh, at both ends. And uh, if I want to achieve that kind of fit on a table saw, um, I'm going to go past it a number of times before I get it just right. So this is a way of dialing in that perfect fit. Uh, let me show you this super shoot now. This is my basic model. I'm demonstrating here with the uh, Veritas uh, shooting plane. And it's a ramp shooting board. It distributes the wear along the edge so you're not hitting the same spot. It keeps that edge keener for that much longer and it won't deform it. Also ergonomically, uh, it's pitched away from me so I can use my leaning weight down on it. And so now I can engage my uh, gluteus maximus. I can use my uh, gravity and my, the weight of my torso. So ergonomically, this ramp shooting board is really nice. The super shoot has three fences. <clears throat> has a 90 degree fence that's micro adjustable. The super shoot has a um, easily installed miter fence. It's got these two liner bushings and diamond pins. There's um, a steel plate directly underneath here. So when I activate this mag jig, which is a very powerful force, it's going to hold this down securely to the board. So now I can work to my finished knife line. So when the two pieces are shot like that, the, the end grain fibers are very smooth and straight. And when you put the joint together, uh, you get this kind of precision and tightness of joint, such that you could actually put some uh, hide glue on here and rub it, and the joint will, will hold by its own because it's so uh, perfectly fit. So carcass miters, you can visualize uh, the side of a box or a lid. If they're larger pieces, they could be bracket feet. So that kind of corner joint is great on this, uh, with the donkey ear attachment. It holds the work in a way where, say for this little piece, I don't have to get anywhere near a spinning blade. I just drop the piece in. It's snug to the front of the plane. All I have to do is hold it and plane straight across. So to verify, the quality of the joint, I'm going to put those two pieces against a common straight edge and see how they fit. And I can live with that. 
Yeah, I'm Scott Meek, Scott Meek Woodworks. And these are a few of the planes I make. I've got everything from a six inch block plane. And this, this one specifically is a Tiger Maple resin infused, really sturdy, really tough plane. We've got a smoothing plane. We've got a 12 inch jack, 16 inch jack plane. And then we've got joiners that run from 22 inches, 28 inches, all the way up to 36 inches. A couple of the main differences in the wood body plane, one of my favorites is just the tactile feedback. So when you're, when you're using the plane, you feel exactly how it's working. You feel any time you get a tear out, you feel if the blade is getting sharp, and it translates because you've got a solid wood from the sole to, to your hand, it just feels differently than any metal body plane out there. Also, it's just a different grip. So when you're, when you're holding it, there's multiple different ways you can hold it. So it's a lot more comfortable, in, especially in extended planing times. Um, you're not holding onto a handle with it with, where it's really rigid and how you hold it. So you can also pull it if you really want to. Uh, Mark, this year for WIA we have debuted two new knife products. Uh, instead of circular woodworking tools, uh, we decided to try something a little bit different. So we have uh, come up with a kit uh, to make a knife that looks like that for the five inch chef's knife. We also have a three and a half inch paring knife. These are, these are kits, they'll be sold like this. The blade, three pins, no rivets. These are easier, we just epoxy this all together. And uh, we will be selling some micarta for uh, knife handle material, which is inert as opposed to wood, which can be volatile. Although most woodworkers have some precious little piece of wood nearby that they would love to use for a knife handle. And I say more power to you. This is Bubinga because I happen to have some Bubinga around. I'm uh, Dave Jeske with Blue Spruce Toolworks. And I'd like to talk about a new mount that I'm just uh, developing. It's a for mortising and doing uh, joinery. It's a heavier duty mallet than my usual round one. It's uh, 24 ounces. The head is made from infused uh, maple. It's infused with acrylic resin, so it completely fills all the wood pores uh, with the resin and makes it extremely tough and durable. It's got two faces. This face has a uh, leather uh, face so for assembling your joinery. Uh, without marring your woodwork. And this side is just the, the pure infused uh, maple. So it, uh, you can hit it, your mortising chisels just and it doesn't dent or anything. It's basically a lifetime mallet. It uses a nice hickory handle. It's got two uh, areas to, to, to grab onto for your uh, heavy, heavy hitting. You can hold it back here. And if you want a little bit more controlled hitting, you can choke it up. Like that, it's got a nifty leather thong. And uh, so it's gonna retail for $145. And it'll be on my uh, website in just a couple weeks. My name is Juan Vergara and I make infill planes. An infill plane is, an, is, a, is so called because you fill in the space between the sides of the plane with wood, preferably exotic wood. This is a very exotic wood hard to get unless you live in California. It's what I call a California stink wood. It's eucalyptus, blue gum eucalyptus, and the damn stuff grows everywhere. Uh, but it has gorgeous figure. If you can find the right wood, it has absolutely gorgeous figure. This one weighs about uh, four and a half or five pounds. And there is a, um, uh, a frog, a steel frog, riveted to the inside just behind the mouth. It's half an inch high, two inches long, and spreads the width of the plane. That brings a center, it adds weight and mass, and it brings a center of gravity on this plane right about there. And with an infill plane, it's the mass that does the trick. Because of the, because of the mass, uh, even though it's heavy, it's actually easier to use an infill plane than it is uh, an ordinary plane. Besides that, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Unfortunately, most of these tools are a bit out of my price range, but that doesn't stop me from drooling on them. If you get a chance to attend a conference like Woodworking in America, I highly recommend it. Between the education, the camaraderie, and the opportunity to get some hands-on time with tools, you just can't beat it.